I love growing over winter, but there's a lot of misinformation for UK growers out there. A lot of that information has been generated in the US and Canada, mainland Europe, places where there's just completely different conditions than we experience in the UK. Often it's a lot colder and it's a lot sunnier. And so here we know we don't get a lot of sun over winter, but it's also a lot warmer than it is in those countries. Um, so anyway, I thought I'd talk a little bit about winter growing from the UK perspective and my perspective. I'm in the northwest of England and uh, let's so go on. The first thing to think about is what affects how successful something is going to grow over winter. And I'll use leafy greens like lettuces and salad rocket and spinach and things like that. Uh, as the kind of way I'm going to illustrate this, but it applies to lots of other things, to turnips and radishes and carrots, etc., etc. So, first things, what affects rate of growth? And I think rate of growth is the key thing to think about. You can often keep something alive outside with no protection at all, but you won't really be able to harvest consistently from it week after week after week after week, which is what you really want to do if you're growing over winter. So I'm talking about growing rather than keeping things alive. So what affects rate of growth? Well, sunlight does. And again, here we've got quite a bit of misinformation, people talking about, you know, once sunlight levels dip below 10 hours a day, everything stops growing. And that's just, not the case in a warmer climate like the UK. We got, you know, in this polytunnel, for example, things grow absolutely all year round. Even outside, things like broad beans uh, and field beans grow away quite happily, even through the middle of winter, you know, with light levels around eight or less. So, light levels are important, but don't believe that everything just stops growing as soon as light levels drop below 10 hours. So the second thing is temperature. Now, a rule of thumb for temperature is that for every increase, every 10 degrees increase in temperature of above about, say, four degrees, and this is for winter crops, uh, you'll double the rate of growth. So if you can increase the temperature by 20 degrees, which you definitely can in a polytunnel, for example, for most of the time, then you could get a quadrupling four times the growth rate. Now that really adds up you know, over several weeks. That's the difference between a full head of lettuce and a little seedling uh, after three or four weeks. So, yeah, so temperature is really important and that's something we can definitely do something about even in the UK climate. You can't do much about your sunlight levels, but you can definitely do something about your temperature. So the next thing is stresses. And there's quite a few stresses that affect uh, plants. So the obvious one is mechanical stress from being buffeted by the wind. Um, then there's the stress of growing in waterlogged ground with low levels of oxygen. Uh, then there's the stress of not having ready access to nutrients. There's pest stresses, all sorts of and stresses from being buffeted again by heavy rain, continuous heavy rain. Mechanical stress from snow stress from being frozen and then thawed, frozen, then thawed repeatedly. So lots of stresses and they will, all those sorts of stresses will reduce growth rates. And again, there's definitely something you can do about those stresses. And then there's diseases and pests and, you know, the pests often affect plants that are being stressed. So those two go nicely together or not very nicely together, depending on the way you look at it. And then there's diseases, and often diseases uh, also affect stressed plants. And all, but also, in winter especially, are associated with poor levels of ventilation. So if you close your polytunnel up tight, then you might increase your temperature, but you reduce your ventilation, and that will increase the risk of disease. And diseased plants are also more prone to pests. So you know, all that sort of thing. So you really want to try and keep light levels up, ventilation levels high, temperature high, stresses low, and disease and pest pressure as low as possible. So those are the things that you're really trying to achieve with winter growing. And of course, 
pick the right varieties. So the best thing you can do is get a greenhouse with glass. Glass insulates better than polythene, so it's going to be warmer. It lets more light in, so you're going to have increased light levels. You can open the doors and vent the roof, so you can increase ventilation. Um, it's just a great environment, but it's really expensive. So the next best thing you can do is a polythene like this. And so it has all the advantages really of a greenhouse. Um, but let's talk about it in more detail because I think it's the best option for most people. So it's fantastic from the perspective of light levels. You know, the sort of polythene that I've got in my polytunnel diffuses the light, which means that a light beam coming in will get sh scattered and so everything gets access to a sort of even level of light. So in a greenhouse, you can get hot spots and cold spots. Uh, in a polytunnel or low light spots and high light spots. In a polytunnel, everything's nice and diffuse and even. It's really easy to vent a polytunnel. Not quite as easy as a greenhouse, but it's still pretty good. I've got doors at both ends and I've always got, almost always, um, only in most exceptional weather would I have both doors closed. And that would be only if it's going to get really cold or if the wind direction is changing overnight. So normally I'd have one door open, the, the wind side. Um, still some air will get through that door because it gets under it, over the top, through the gaps around the sides. So there is a bit of a flow of air through there, but I'd have one door open overnight. Now, even on a mild frosty day, I would still do that. I want to keep ventilation levels in the polytunnel really high keep light levels high I want to make sure the polytunnel plastic is nice and clean but what I also want to do is I want to make sure that I've got polytunnel plastic that's either coated or I've applied a coating to stop water droplets forming on the inside so condensation droplets forming on the inside and so what you want is a hydrophobic coating and that causes the droplet to spread out flat so you've still got the same amount of water there, but that water is no longer in droplet form. It's in the form of a very thin film. The light uh, gets through really easily. You don't get drips on your plants, increasing the risk of diseases like mildews. Um, and you also get, at night, infrared radiation reflected back. So it comes from the ground, heads out to space, but it hits this thin film of water on the polytunnel plastic and it gets reflected back into the tunnel and that keeps it just a little bit warmer. So the next thing is stressors. So if we just go through some of those stressors that I talked about, well, mechanical stressors from buffeting by the wind, continuous heavy rain, of course, you're not going to get any of those. Waterlogged soil, you're not gonna get that. You can hydrate the polytunnel to the perfect degree. Um, and that's really important. Otherwise, again, you're going to get damp and you know, reduced um, uh, oxygen in the soil. Now, you can also eliminate to a fairly substantial degree some of the cold issues. So obviously in the daytime, it's really nice. Lots of light coming in, quite a lot of infrared radiation as well. That is all being soaked up by the soil or compost in your beds and your floor. I've got a nice black floor soaking up lots of infrared radiation. You want things as black as possible to get maximum absorption of heat during the day. Now some people would also put plastic bottles in the beds and things like that. I don't do that and the reason I don't do that is because first off they take up space where you could be growing something and second off, they make only, I think, a marginal difference because these beds, I think, have at least three to 400 litres of water in the top six inches of the bed. And that is going to warm up out during the day and then it's going to release that heat at night. And obviously it's going to s store some of it just for the roots of the plants. And you can improve on that retention of that heat by using a fleece blanket. So I've got my fleece here, it's just clipped on to my little grow bench. I can unclip it, just lay it over these plants. It takes 
30 seconds to put it down. And what happens then is that when the infrared radiation is and, and convection, so heat, heat is lost from the beds by infrared radiation and convection, when that comes up out of the soil, it gets trapped by the fleece blanket and the air underneath the fleece blanket stays nice and warm. The roots stay warmer, the leaves stay warmer. And then during the day, I take the fleece blanket off and the plants um, obviously then benefit from maximum light levels, but also the beds get nice and warm again from the direct sunlight. So it's very rare that I would actually leave this fleece blanket on for multiple days and nights together. I'm normally just popping it down at night and, and generally only when there's a risk of frost. Um, and, you know, I'm not obsessed about it. it. You know, if it's raining or something like that and I can't be bothered to come down to the plot, then I'll just leave it off. You know, the plant or everything in the polytunnel um, is hardy. It can stand a few frosts. But if there's going to be repeated frosts day after day after day after day, then it is pretty useful to do that. Otherwise, you will definitely see a check in growth. And since we're harvesting every week, uh, for a large number of people, we want you know growth uh, rates to be maximal. So if you can't afford a polytunnel, what's the next best thing? Well, I think little low tunnels and coal frames are absolutely fantastic. We use a lot of them. It triples the amount of space that we've got under cover um, at a lot tremendously cheaper than a polytunnel. I think this polytunnel is about a thousand pounds for the same area in coal frames, I think uh, it's probably more like 200, 300 pounds, something like that. So you know, a third of the price. And in many ways, they're more flexible because you can take the lids off in summer and just let everything just grow uh, under na in natural conditions. So they're really nice from that point of view. They're like having a movable polytunnel, which some people in the US do have. Um, and they've got, as I say, most of the benefits of a true polytunnel or a greenhouse. They shelter the plants from the mechanical stresses of the wind and the rain and the hail and the snow. They provide really nice level, high levels of ventilation, but they also uh, capture lots of the heat uh, during the day and at night. I always have mine open a little bit during the day so there's really good ventilation levels, but if there's again going to be quite a frost, then I'll close them up at night. And unless it's a really hard frost, the ground almost never freezes. You might get a little bit of freezing on some of the leaves, but you know, everything's really hardy, so it's no real um, concern. They also have the advantage that you can optimally hydrate the beds and watering is so easy in winter, you know, it's only every two weeks or something like that that things need a water. Best to water on a really nice sunny breezy day so that the leaves are completely dry. You know, do water in the morning so the leaves are, are completely dry by night time and that will reduce the risk of getting anything like downy mildew on your leaves. How to compare a polytunnel to a low tunnel or a coal frame, I would say that the polytunnel is probably giving me about five times the growth rate of just something that's outside uh, without any protection and a low tunnel about this sort of height uh, is probably giving me about three and a half to four uh, a coal frame is probably giving me about three times the growth rate so really fantastic uh, increases in growth for you know a relatively modest investment we calculate, I think when we first put the low tunnels and the polytunnels in, the, the low tunnel and the uh, coal frames in, that they paid back in the first six months. So that's a really good return on investment. And they last about 10 years, something like that. And they probably last longer than that, but some parts of them will probably be, need to be replaced after about 10 years. If you're interested, more interested in some of this stuff, I'll put some links down in the description to uh, show you how to make coal frames and load tunnels and compare them and all that sort of thing. Just talk about the cheapest option, which is fleece on its own. You've got two options here. You can either support the fleece so it's not touching the plants 
or lay the fleece directly on the plant. Let's just talk about the cheapest of all the options, which is to use just horticultural fleets or row cover, uh, as they call it in the US. And that is a fan, if you can't afford uh, low tunnels and poly tunnels, then that's a fantastic option at, even outside. It's also, as I said, really great in a poly tunnel as well. Um, and there's two options really that you've got. One is to lay it directly over the plants. If you do that, you'll still get some of the mechanical stress from the wind buffeting and banging on the, uh, on the plants. And that can be quite severe if you live in a windy location. So I would say if you're in a windy location, you really want to support the fleece a little bit. Uh, so it's above the level of the plants. So it's not quite as good from a mechanical stress point of view. It does reduce light levels, maybe down by about 15%. Uh, by comparison with polythene so or, and it's even more by comparison with glass and um, it doesn't allow you to control hydration levels and because it also reduces ventilation although it is self-ventilating to a degree because there are pores in it that do allow water vapor through it you do get a much more damp environment underneath it um, obviously when it's wet it's heavy and if it's wet and windy then there's quite a lot of mechanical stress on the plants um, Ventilation is a little bit all or nothing, um, whereas with a coal frame or a low tunnel you can prop it up at various different degrees of openness, uh, so you can get almost like outside levels of ventilation really easily. With fleece, it's either on or it's off to, to a large extent. Um, so, you know, it's nowhere near as good in my opinion as coal frames and low tunnels. It also wears out quite quickly, so you might get one, maybe two years out of fleece, whereas you're gonna get 10 years probably out of a coal frame uh, or uh, a polytunnel. But it is much, much cheaper than any of those other options. So if you wanna give winter growing a try, it's really useful. Um, so yeah, I, I'm a big fan of it. I use it all the time at certain times of year. We use it mostly in the back garden um, because in the back garden, we don't want any structures. You know, we don't want low tunnels and coal frames and things because it's a back garden, we want it to look nice. Um, and so just popping fleece on just for, you know, a month or something like that uh, in the early spring, um, it, it's really, really, really beneficial. You do see a substantial increase in growth rate and the quality of the plants is, is much higher because they're not subject to those mechanical stresses and other stressors. So hopefully this is a good sort of whistle, top, whistle stop tour through some of the factors to consider for successful growing over winter. My name's Steve, this is the Seaside Allotment Channel and I'll see you soon.